welcome. Today I will be talking about theme creation using the SXA CLI, a new feature introduced in SXA 9.3 as part of our ongoing front-end developer workflow improvements. Before we dive into the how, let's have a look at why we made these changes. So prior to 9.3, SXA stored all the theme configuration and all the theme assets within the media library. For those of you who work with versions prior to 9.3, you might recognize this file structure on the left side. All of the assets were stored in Cycor, all the SAS files, the CSS files, and all the JavaScript files. But now, with 9.3, we're introducing some changes. First of all, we made all the Creative Exchange Live tooling available as NPM packages, and therefore removed it from the media library. Next, we introduced the SXA CLI. Using this command line interface, you can now create themes without any Cycor knowledge. We also made sure that we were not storing any unnecessary files within the media library, so all of your source files like the SAS files are stored separately from Cycor. This makes it easier to use standard versioning control systems like Git for all of your theme assets. And using Creative Exchange Live, you now have the option to use an external file minifying tool and bundling tool and only store the compiled assets within Cycor. So now let's have a look at how we can install the CLI and use it to create a new theme. So in order to work with the CLI, we obviously need to install it first. You can use any command line tooling, you can use the, the new Windows terminal, you can use the command prompt, you can use the PowerShell console. For me personally, I really like working in Visual Studio Code, uh, which has a built-in terminal, uh, which essentially just runs a PowerShell console. And um, right now I'm started and the first thing I need to check is whether I have Node.js installed. So let's see if we have Node.js and which version. So you can see that I have uh, version 10.15.1. Fine, so that works. Second thing we need to do is we need to register uh, the registry where all the Cycor packages are uh, being hosted. So we're not hosting it on the uh, official NPM site, we're hosting our own um, uh, registry. And we can do that by using this command, npm config set. Um, one thing uh, worth noting is that if you use the PowerShell console, you need to escape the add character. So therefore, uh, you see the little um, tilt before the uh, before the add sign. Um, right now, I can run this command, and uh, what it actually did is it registered it in a locally on my local machine. So right now, if I want to install an npm package labeled with add as xa, um, it knows which registry to use. So let's see if we can install the SXA CLI right now. So let's go npm, the i for install. We'll use uh, minus g to make it a global install, so I don't need to install it every time I'm going to use the, the, the CLI somewhere in a different location. Then we'll say add SXA slash CLI. And now it's going to look for the CLI within our own registry, and it's going to install it locally. So it's going to install all the dependencies, so all the depending uh, NPM modules is using, it's going to all install them locally on my hard drive. And this uh, might take some bit. So now NPM that is magic and inst install the uh, CLI locally. Um, you see some uh, error messages or some warning messages on, on older versions. Um, for now, you can just ignore these. Um, the CLI will uh, definitely work. So we installed the CLI and uh, right now there's nothing really in our uh, SXA folder yet. Um, as you can see, nothing is being listed there. It's all installed globally, so it's all insta installed on a global location uh, within your machine. So now let's first call the SXA CLI. We say SXA, register, and I'm going to register the URL in which I'm going to create the new theme. So in my case, it's going to be HTTPS sxa93.dev.local So now it's registered this location, this URL, so it's going to know where to, where to create the new theme. So now I'm going to tell sxa to create a new theme. sxa new example theme. So it's asking me, um, do you want to create this theme for the instance based on the URL you provided earlier? Do you want to provide a different URL? No, I do not. So it's going to ask me for my uh, login credentials. So I'm just using the default one, so admin MB, so I can just hit enter. 
And now it's going to ask me where do you want to store this theme. So this theme needs to be stored somewhere relative to the theme spot within Sitecore. In order to do so, I do need to know which spot it's going to be. Uh, so let's go over to Sitecore. So let's see what we have right here. I already have two tenants. I'm going to have I have a Sitecore tenant and I have a showcase tenant. Um, let's create a new tenant first just for demo purposes. I'm just going to call it example tenant. And I'm going to use the default modules. So right now SXA is setting up a new tenant and it's going to um, do all the scaffolding actions uh, that go with that. So it's going to set some things in order. And our tenant has been created. So we'll close this window and right now we can see we have our example tenant right here so a tenant is nothing uh, without a site so let's sort of set up a site as well and I'm just gonna call this example site I'm really not going to do that much with it I just want to have a representative um, location where I can store the theme so I can also create a new theme right now, but I'll leave that as is. I'll uh, also leave all the modules in place, all of the default settings. I'm just going to hit OK. So as I say, notice that I have not created a theme or assigned an existing theme. Um, so it's asking me, do you sure? Are you sure you want to continue without a theme? Yes, I am definitely sure. I'm just going to install a new site for now. The theme will do using the CLI. So as I say, I finished setting up the new site. It shows me the site manager um, so I can make some modifications to my host uh, environment. Uh, for now, I'll leave this as is. We'll immediately dive into the media library where we see the base uh, path themes here. And in here we see our tenant. So my example tenant, the one I just created, which has an example site. And right now there are no themes uh, assigned there. So let's let's make sure that we're going to create a new uh, theme and we'll put it under the example site node in here. So as you can see, the path will be example tenant slash example site. Now let's go back to Visual Studio Code to our terminal in here. So we're going to say example tenant forward slash example site. Hit OK. So the CLI now asks me if I would like to set up a new theme configuration file. Yes, that is definitely something that I would like to do. And now it asks me which active module do you want for your theme. So right now I'm just running a basic website. Um, I want to use everything. So I want to use the search features, maps, uh, theming, uh, definitely. So I'll just leave this as is. Um, if you have specific reasons not to choose the search ones because you're using external search or whatsoever you can leave those as is. Um, I'll choose them right now and what SXA does it will now download those uh, files needed for the themes in the background and then it will make sure that everything is being stored on file so that you also have all those source files at your disposal and you can uh, modify them as you wish. Okay, it's finished downloading all the files and it uh, also set up my uh, theme folder and copy all the project files. And one thing you might have noticed on the left side uh, in my uh, window in here, you now see the example theme and you see all the source files are there. So all my SAS files are there, which are then later compiled into CSS files, uh, as well as uh, the gulp tasks, the fonts needed and stuff like that. So everything needed to run a theme is now stored on my local uh, local folder. So it asked me, do you want to set up the URL to the Sitecore instance? Uh, right now it's using SXA 9.3. So if you wish to use a different URL for your different sites, so if let's say that you're using multiple uh, sites, multiple host names, you can choose um, uh, another host name. For now, I'll uh, just leave it as is. Now it comes to the configuration for the theme. So um, the CLI is asking me, do you want to have ECMAScript 6 support? So it uses Babel to translate uh, the ECMAScript 6 to, well, uh, backwards compatible uh, JavaScript for all the browsers. So yeah, sure, let's use that. Do you want to compile a minified file? So do I want to 
compile all the JavaScript into one file, a pre optimized min file. Yes, I definitely want to do that. You want to upload all the source files needed to build that file into Sycor. No, I only want to have the compiled file stored within my media library, so I'll leave the source files on my disk. It will now ask me the same for the CSS file, so do you want to compile all the CSS to into one single CSS file? Yes, I do want to do that. Do you want to upload all the CSS files that are being generated uh, through the SAS? No, I do not, want, do not want to upload all of those files because I would like to keep my media library pretty clean. And I do not wish to upload the SAS source files as well. So now it's done, my project is ready. Um, so as you can see, we have our example theme right here. Uh, we still have the configuration. And you notice that right now, let me close this, or let me minimize this window a bit. You notice that uh, right now it's already set uh, the instance URL correct. And all the questions that we have been um, answering right here are being stored here as well. So in this case, uh, all of our JavaScript, uh, ECMAScript 6, do you want to disable the source uploading? True. So I do not want to upload all the source files into Sycor. So if you later on uh, wishes to do that, as uh, you, you do want to do that, then you can always change the values within the configuration or you can run the uh, SXA CLI again. So if you use SXA in it, then it will ask you those questions again and you can answer them. Um, as you can see. So for now, I'll just leave this as is. The one thing that, uh, that you might notice that right now in my uh, example theme, there is also a package.json, which includes all, of, all the NPM modules uh, which are required to run the theme, run the whole uh, Creative Exchange Live um, uh, tooling. Um, so we do need to do another NPM install within our theme. So let's go into our example theme and we'll hit NPM install. Now it's going to use the package that JSON is going to install all those uh, NPM modules on which the whole uh, Creative Change Live tooling is depending on. In the meanwhile, while NPM is doing the install, we can also have a look within Cycor to see what happened over there. So here we have our um, site. Uh, theme structure, uh, so we have the, the theme root folder, we have our uh, tenant, example tenant, and we have our example site. Um, if we are going to refresh this right now, you see that we also have our example theme, the one which we, we created just using the CLI. It also stores some, well, right now empty folders and a readme file. So it already made sure um, that the whole theme structure is also registered within Sycor, so it knows where to place those files later on. Now, let's go back to our Visual Studio Code to see how far our NPM process is going. So, NPM run, uh, ran. Um, it installed all the files uh, locally. So, now let's see if we can run our gulp task. And our gulp task is just going to run um, the, the, the tasks which are going to run in the background, which is going to synchronize all of the changes uh, into Sycor. So, it's going to ask me to log in. So, yeah, we'll just use the default ones. And now it's watching all of those folders. So it's watching the SAS folder, the HTML folder, if we had those, um, the JavaScript, uh, CSS, everything. So let's go to our SAS folder. And let's say that we are uh, going to make some changes to our mixing. So instead of the 960 pixels wide for desktop, let's change that to 1200. So if I'm now going to save this by hitting Control S, then you notice that our terminal is going to run and all kinds of changes are, are happening there. So what's happening right now is that our SAS files are being compiled into our CSS files and then the CSS file is getting uploaded. So now if you go back to Sycor and we refresh our theme, you see that the styles folder it now contains uh, actual files. So let's open up this folder and you'll see that we only have the pre-optimized min in here meaning that Sycor only uses the output that you generated uh, using Visual Studio Code. So all of the files are still here. Um, nothing of that has been uh, migrated to Sycor or have been synchronized with Sycor. Only the optimized min file is now being stored within Creative Exchange Live. 
So how does that, this work with the asset optimizer, uh, you might be asking yourselves within Cyger, which was already there prior to 9.3. Um, what the asset optimizer uh, is running whenever you, uh, a user or a visitor requests your website, it will now look into the media library folders in, the, in your theme folders and it will see if it has a pre-optimized min file. If it has a pre-optimized min file, it will only serve that file 101 on how it's stored within Cyker. It will do nothing uh, other than that. If it does not have the pre-optimized main files, then it will use its own configuration settings to bundle all the files stored uh, and serve it uh, as a minified file itself. So as you can see, it is pretty easy right now using the CLI to create a new theme. It takes a few uh, steps to install the CLI to configure your own theme and then uh, have the well the NPM uh, do the install within your, uh, in your theme itself and have that synchronized with Sitecore. The main benefit right now is that you can just use uh, any versioning control system on your local disk. So your uh, example theme can now go into uh, your own uh, Git repository uh, apart from your Cycor instance. So there is no uh, conflict in there. There's no two, uh, well, two sources of truth for that matter. There's just a single source of truth, which is now your local file folder. So that's all for now. Um, hope you find this useful. If you have any questions, um, use the comments or uh, otherwise find me on Twitter on at Mark Vanaalst.